We jiggling, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. oh, oh we we jiggling up in here. All right. Uh, <laughs> welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Everything Club. Um, it, we're going to be kind of rushing through this because we already did all this already about 10 minutes ago. Um, we had a bit of a kerfuffle with technology. A bit of a snafu, if you will. I like kerfuffle better. Okay, that's fair. Uh, <laughs> snafu. Uh, we were right in the middle of recording. We just got into our quick question round, and uh, the computer just said no. <laughs> we, yeah. we just... Uh, uh, we, we lost all of that, so we're going to rush right back through just quick introductions. Uh, I'm Noah. I'm an overall enjoyer, fun user of all five senses, and <laughs> an electrician. Uh, Keelan, introduce yourself. Uh, hey, everyone. I'm Keelan. Um, also, we're not going to like rush through the entire episode, to no, be no, clear. No, no, no. Just, just the intro part. Yeah, just the intro part, because we, we lost that. Um, yeah, I'm Keelan Luke Morrissey, filmmaker, uh, writer, director, poet, hurry up, that'd be great. Et um, Sorry about that. <laughs> Why are you taking... <laughs> So long. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm Keelan. Uh, hi, I'm George. Uh, I'm an engineer, an entrepreneur, and an entertainment connoisseur. That's it. Let's do this. For movies, music, books, and more, join Keelan, Noah, and George, your ultimate entertainment hub. Welcome to the Everything Club. All right, yeah, today we are talking about <laughs> Billy Eilish's <laughs> most most recent album. Most recent. Most recent album, uh, Hit Me Hard and Soft. Indeed. I think it's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we are, <laughs> as we promised, a quick episode. <laughs> and <laughs> that's it for this week. <laughs> All right, so uh, where we got to before it left off was uh, I had asked Keelan, if you were to stalk someone and left a call-in card, what would that be? And your answer was? Uh, my answer was with a little with a little uh, alley oop from George uh, was lantern rings. I would I would leave a uh, a um, specifically a, for stalking. Yeah, specifically for stalking. Yeah, I got a little confused when Noah first asked me that. I, I started you know going into different tangents about different crimes. Uh, I don't know what I was on there, but <laughs> I, I yeah I would uh, I would leave a little lantern ring. It's pretty unmistakable. Probably the only criminal with a green lantern obsession. Um, so I would. Uh, that's that's what that would be. You know, those little plastic rings that you would get at the comic book store at the checkout aisle. You know, the the different uh, different colors. I or don't even know. like you can three D print them too. Like, you can. I, I think you, yeah. you've got a bunch of three D printed ones, don't you? Or you did at one point. Three D printed ones. Yeah. Did I? I know that for a fact because I think like you like uh, an integrity or something. Like your dad got oh. access to a three D printer and that's what you printed. That is yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. Okay okay. I don't know why that's a memory locked in the back fold <laughs> of my brain, but it's there. Um, but yes, that is that is what I would do if I were to stalk someone. <laughs> I would leave lantern rings. Um, right, yeah, okay, back, listener, now you are caught up. Back to normal pace. All right, All Keelan, right. it's your turn to ask right. a question. You can take it slow now, guys. Um, I know you like it slow. <laughs> you know I do. <laughs> okay. No, I like it hard and soft. No. <laughs> oh, um, uh, hey, George. So, a- an interesting discussion surrounding <laughs> this album. Um, was the the length the the number of songs because it is it is only ten tracks which is Billy's shortest album yet and um, excluding I think maybe her like first EP or whatever but she 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 said in an interview somewhat controversially that her last album um, Happier Than Ever which had sixteen tracks was way too many tracks and that no one needs that many songs on an album and that ten was kind of a nice sweet spot for her so I'm curious in in your opinion. What is too many songs for an album, and what's not enough? That's a fantastic question, Keelan. I think all albums should be three songs long. <laughs> <laughs> Solid ten minutes where you can where you can groove out, and then you can continue with your day. Uh, I, I, ironically, she has released a two-song EP one time. Mm-hmm. The guitar songs EP. Absolutely I'll take that. blasphemous. Yeah. yeah. I'll take <laughs> not that. A, not long enough, frankly. <laughs> it should have been three. <laughs> I'd I'd say um I'd say the answer doesn't actually lie in um the number of songs, but probably like the overall length of the album. Mm. Uh the album this time was forty three minutes. Um and I thought that that wasn't like a bad um I thought that wasn't a bad length. I think that once you get past an hour uh for an album, I think that at that point you you aren't necessarily like too many like you're not like you don't have too many songs but you should be like conscious of that 
And yeah. Because like if if you want to have like a listening party and it takes ninety minutes, then or like or like you're doing like a Noah Con where it would probably take like I don't know um, a week. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. and like I, I think at that point um, you may be going a little bit too a little bit too far. But I would, I would qualify it in terms of runtime mm. rather than like number of songs. That's a fair take. That's a fair take. I like it. Absolutely. Hey Noah. Yes. Uh, what does hit me hard and soft mean? How PG do we want to go with this? <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me like that. <laughs> George just gave me the most side eye I've ever seen come from somebody. <laughs> um, hmm. I don't know. <laughs> okay. The reason I the, the, the reason I ask, listener, is because I've actually been thinking about that for a good bit now. Mm. And I don't think it makes too much sense if I'm in the <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to like I'm trying to like figure it out. And yeah. So okay. So the the one one thing I, I I can say that I do have in my notes is that it is like in a very like it feels very emotionally charged as an album. Mm-hmm. So it could be like hip like hard in like the feelings but like <laughs> soft and re- <laughs> and physicality or something sure sure but, but like you, you know what i'm getting at like not i don't like yeah a multitude of feelings right like, yeah. yeah 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 i like that i like that the um the only thing i've, I've heard uh in, in regards to the the origin of the album name is that is that billy just thought it was a cool kind of um uh, like paradox in a way, like you can't yeah. hit something hard and soft at the same time. But like you know? at the same time, so it, yes. it makes yeah. sense. Like it, yeah. No, no, I'm I'm saying like not like literally. It makes like it just as a title, it makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. I li- I like that idea though of, of the album itself, like the tracks, like hitting you hard and then hitting you soft, like which it which it does. It yeah. definitely has some like punchy songs and some like you know much more <laughs> punchy songs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I like that answer. Okay, cool. Yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, George. Yes. Uh, what song do you feel is most underrated mm. from this album, specifically? Oh, interesting, interesting, interesting. Um, I think Skinny doesn't really get enough to get enough love. Mm. Um, I also want to say La Amour uh, de Ma Vie. Mm-hmm. Um, not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. That is one of that's like unironic. That made it on the playlist. That made it on like yeah. several playlists yeah. I have. That yeah. spawned a new playlist <laughs> of, of songs like it because I was like, this is just such a cool vibe. Really, really. Um, and we can talk more about that later. But I, I, I love that kind of like, I don't, I don't even know how to describe. It's it like a like a soft jazzy kind of style. And yeah. I thought that that was that that was that was that was really cool. Like that kind of like, you know, playful, passionate. A um, little like ooh, kind of kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought that it was um, like that is definitely like one of I think like the the gems in the in the album for me. But I think Skinny gets slept on way too much. For sure. I agree. I agree. Uh, hey, Keelan. Yeah. What's up, George? Um, if you had to be a vegetable, which vegetable <laughs> no, would you be? <laughs> Does which that be- relate? Which Does that reference? Be? Does that reference any? Absolutely not. <laughs> Corn. Hey Noah. Um, is corn a vegetable? I think so. It most definitely is. Oh, Pretty no. sure. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a starch. Yeah. Yeah. Because corn starch. Corn is botanically a fruit, but it is commonly referred to as well, a vegetable. I hate how everything is a fucking fruit nowadays. <laughs> Can well, I no, just say that? Because botanically vegetable, like. When we're talking in terms of botany, everything is a fruit. There's no yeah. such thing as vegetables in botany. Oh, well, then that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, okay. Wait, to, wait, hold on. Hold Keelan's on. about to throw mean? hands. <laughs> <laughs> Keelan's about to be like, I hate these fruit. I, I would love to dive into this just for a second. <laughs> Why do you hate that there's so much fruit? Well, I just like... Why? Because as a kid, you know, you're taught these are your fruits and these are your veggies. And like, I just feel like every week i see a post it's like did you know that you know asparagus is a fruit and i'm just like asparagus no. is a stem we'll see like that's what i'm talking about <laughs> this is the problem here it's not it's not a fruit no well i that was an example <laughs> It was just an example of something that would be surprising if it were a fruit. Good, good, and, and good just, point, Noah. Let's <laughs> gaslight Keelan. There's just a lot of that going around. Um, 
This man found out pumpkins were fruit and he was never the same. Yeah, yeah, pumpkins was that was a turning point for me. (laughs) That was just a yeah. Wait till I tell you about tomatoes. At that point, you became (laughs) anti-science. Exactly. (laughs) I was like, I just can't stand for that. I'm I'm a yeah, I'm a fruit uh, denialist. Um, hey Noah. Denialist? That's crazy. All right, yeah. What's up? Billie Eilish is quite known for her multitude of hair colors over the years and reinventing herself with some very bold uh, uh, hair color choices. And so I, I want to know, if you were to dye your hair or, or your roots a particular color, what color would you pick? Okay, this kind of answers your question and kind of doesn't. All right. Um, in, my, in senior year of high school, mm-hmm. um, during track season, if I had made it to state, mm. or I made I made a bet with somebody else on the team, and th- this is the only time I'd ever thought about dyeing my hair, so yeah, th- yeah, that's yeah. why this is coming up. Sure. Um, if I had made it to state, I would have had to dye my hair down the middle, half blue, <laughs> half bright orange. Our school colors, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Oh my, that would have been a sight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think she should do that next, honestly. <laughs> Go full greyhound on them. That's a solid idea. Hell yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that's that's really the only time I've thought about dyeing my hair. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, I mean, I guess that, I wouldn't do it now, but I don't know what yeah. I would do it. Do I would need more time to think about it, but we don't got time for that based on everything that's happened tonight. <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. Um, I like it, I like it. Should we dive in, gentlemen, to our open floor discussion of the album? Yes. I think we should segue. Cool. <laughs> Let's segue, boys. Incredible. It's been a minute since we did that. Uh, all right, where should we Where should we begin? Lamore is probably my favorite song too. <laughs> Please keep all of that in. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, you think so? If not, if, if not at least part of it. <laughs> Listener, if you don't know, they do this to me at least once an episode. This is they our just go dead silent. Bit. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, well, let me let me say this because this part got cut out when we had to restart the episode. Uh, I just got back from Chicago where I saw uh, Billy perform on the Hit Me Hard and Soft tour at the United Center. And that was that was a electrifying show, I must say. It was it was very very cool. Uh, we got in line very early in the morning to get wristbands, which allowed us to come back later in the day. And we got 381st and 382nd in line. That's what you get for showing up at 8:30 a.m. when there's people who had camped the night before. Uh, for a concert that wasn't until seven. When? Well, opening <laughs> seven band started at night. seven. She came on at 8:30. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, but Camille and I got like the third row. So we were very close and it was very cool to be that close to an artist performing on such a massive stage, like with just like the, the energy of 25,000 people, um, all there for this like one single person who's performing was really crazy. And I've, I've attended some, some big shows like George, you and I attended Noah Khan at, at the uh, Hollywood Casino Amphitheater. And that was a similar crowd size. But I would I would uh, argue additionally Macklemore. In additionally Macklemore, indeed we did see Macklemore in a, in a quite a massive venue. However, I would I would say that with with Billy's show it was uniquely high energy because she is a massive artist and the uh, yeah the 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 crowd was insane. I mean it was the 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 noise level of of and let me say and this is no shade. I am not the main demographic of this. <laughs> really? Yeah. You Ke- don't say. Ke- <laughs> Ke- what, what do you What do you mean, Kellen? There were there were there was a chorus of, of young women screaming screaming these lyrics. Oh, uh, I was I was in the minority. Um, wow, uh, I would never I, expect it. If I could interject, yeah, yeah, uh, go a on, concert go on. that I recently went to where I felt yeah. the exact same way. Oh, really? Was, uh, when Sabrina Carpenter came to town. When did you see Sabrina Carpenter? When she was in town. Well, (laughs) 
Now you know how it feels. <laughs> well, well put, Noah. Um, I got. I don't quite remember like the exact day off the top of my head. It was. Gotcha. It was. Uh, I think mid October. Okay. Okay. Uh, for her short and sweet tour. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. I was not in the majority. At that. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Did you get arrested for being too sexy? Unfortunately, not. Dang, that's too bad. You know how they do that. You heard? You seen that? No. Oh, really? Uh, every show she arrests someone, arrests someone for being too sexy. Yeah, oh, we, really? we were way too far back in the, okay. <laughs> in the seats for that. Mm-hmm. Um, we, but, we would both arrest you, Noah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, yeah, I, I just like, I feel what you felt. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I want to show you boys some pictures later where my head was... <laughs> A good distance above everyone else's. <laughs> I did feel I did feel bad for blocking some people's view, but I'm also like I, what what am I gonna do? Like kneel like for two hours? No, I'm gonna enjoy you this. You wouldn't kneel for Billy. I mean, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going off the rails. Tonight. <laughs> we really are. Listener, I feel like we're normally at least ten percent more composed than this. Um, this is what. You know, I I assume that when I got up at four o'clock this morning, that I was gonna be more drained, yeah, and a little bit more like laid back this episode. I think the opposite has happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, incredible, incredible show. Um, but let's let's get into the album, and and if there's anything more I I have to say on on the show as it comes up, I, I will. But but uh, let's let's talk about this this album. This album, Hit Me Hard and Soft, came out earlier this year. First, I think first quarter of this year it was like maybe March or April. Um, I first listened to it in Chicago and yeah, so it's this, it's this 10 song album where I feel like each song is very, very unique. Um, and, and is, it is, it's a cohesive album, but each song also kind of feels like its own sort of experiments in, in doing something different from the other songs. Uh, and that's something I feel like is, is cool about a lot of her work that she's, she has gotten very experimental, um, you know, it's it's no no two albums sound the same, and no two songs have quite the same vibe, which I think is which I think is cool. Um, L'Amour, as we mentioned, which is a, a standout from the album, um, that one is I think uniquely cool because it actually has two completely co- contrasting vibes in the same song. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. J- just just to j- just to comment on that, uh, that's actually not the only song where they kind of made that like techno beat shift. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> There, it's I I I wanna. It, it was also in. I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. Chihiro. Uh, yeah, Chihiro. I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but that's that's the uh, that's the protagonist in the Studio Ghibli film Spirited Away. Yeah, and, and so it's named after her. Yeah, no, Ch- no, Chihiro. I mean, I mean in, in in that song again, there's like an abrupt techno beat shift, and even a yes. little bit in like lunch at the end, they like yeah, yeah, yeah. they do kind of like twist towards that um t- towards that energy, and I th- and I thought that that was a very very interesting thing um yeah because again i haven't really i haven't really i hadn't really seen that um as much yeah she did it in um the previous album on the song happier than ever mm-hmm. i don't know if you remember that but the first the first song is or the first half of the song is just this very kind of slow mellow kind of chill vibe and then it just goes into like straight up rock and i feel like that progression is so cool and unexpected and like you're sitting at like the two minute mark of the song and you're like, how is this going to go on for another three minutes? And then it does. And, um, and I feel like L'Amour was kind of a, almost a sister song to happier than ever in, 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 in its flow, but they did it very differently. It didn't, it didn't just do the same trick of going into rock. It went into almost a different, yeah, that's like techno sound. Um, when we were first driving and listening to that song, I remember I was like, yeah, the first half of this song kind of sounds like this, yeah, this kind of vintage, like blossom deary, jazzy sound. And then you're like, and the second half of it sounds like Wreck It Ralph Breaks the Internet. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, listener, it was, very, it was very wild. I'm not going to yeah. lie. They, uh, Billy also released an extended cut of that song that Indeed. has like, that has more in, in, in it. And I yeah. thought that, that was also very interesting that they would cut it for like the initial release yeah she said that was like a like a club like party version of the song because it's yeah. just it's just the yeah. upbeat part and yeah. then with that part extended and yeah. that's that's actually the part she did at the concert was mm-hmm. the uh the extended version the eilish cut all right yeah the, the eilish cut <laughs> <laughs> the, the 
I want to bring like I want to bring up like an Al. I, I think that Billy has like two like two pretty distinct styles in this album that I thought were really cool. The mm. first is on like the album level, and then the second is on like a song level. Mm. Uh, on the album level, I thought like the hard and soft thing really kind of played into like the level of beat that was actually introduced in in in, in each of these songs. Yeah, because yeah. like Skinny was like. It was almost completely like violin, soft vocals. There was no yeah. like, there was no hard beat at all. Mm-hmm. And then like lunch, I mean, that was like that one blew up like crazy. Right, right. Uh, but it's like it's it's it has like an extremely prominent beat. And then like right afterwards, you had like greatest, also like very minimal kind of beat. And then mm-hmm. it kind of it kind of alternates through the album of this like it does heavy yeah. kind of like thumping style. And then like the next song will be like very mellow, very quiet, very. Um, not 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 quiet, but like more like soothing and less like abrupt. Yeah, like the way that it yeah, is. it's that it's that cycling yeah. between the hard and soft yeah. kind of motifs. Yeah, exactly. Um, I thought I thought Chihiro. Maybe that's what it was. No, it couldn't be it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought Chihiro was a was a song that um. That one has become a fan favorite, and that one kind of does both in a way. It's kind of in this middle ground, and that's such an interesting song. There's very little traditional structure to that song it doesn't have a chorus i don't think it's kind of just it's like just a free flow kind of thing like they repeat lines and phrases um but and and the song is yeah and and it's inspired by spirited away and it's kind of i guess like a a journey through this weird um uh unfamiliar space and i feel like that's that's kind of a cool thing that was achieved with that That, song that that, that's what i thought blue was as well Mm. where i was like they're really they're they're like we've completely abandoned structure. Yeah, um, like, 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 yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. like the structure that we've come to. And an artist that I thought also does this very well is Dermot Kennedy. Yeah, I, th- I think yeah. that like especially like a lot more of his like emotional songs, storytelling type he, songs. He will talk. He will toss the idea of a chorus out. Yeah, for um, sure. And it'll, it, it, and and what he'll do is he'll just have like an actual just like song version of like the rising action, and then like. Like the fall, like like things, he he has like the 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 archetypes of the story, mm-hmm. like inside of like the beat and like the way that the song is kind of like even, um, it, like the way that the song progresses. And totally. I thought, and I thought like I could draw like a parallel there, which is just like this. I like even when I was even when I wrote down like the notes on blue, I thought I wrote down this entire song was a journey, and I like, <laughs> <laughs> I, like capitalized that. I was like, oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Because cause Blue kind of starts out, you, you almost think it's going to have a traditional song structure because it's, it's got that, um, it, it, yeah, the, the like, I try to live in black and white, but I'm so blue. And it's like that very catchy melody. And then midway through the song, it kind of steeps into this. Well, those, there's like those deepened vocals and there's these, these, these lyrics that come out of nowhere. There's like that one lyric that's um something about like – overcome by your your father's plans to rule the world i'm like who is she talking about like <laughs> that's you know a, i think that's also the theme where it's just like out of nowhere i'll just hear like a line and i'll be like yeah huh yeah like i mean that sounds cool but yeah like, what does it mean yeah that's and, that's i i wrote that in my notes for this episode that there are a lot of mysterious lyrics yeah um there are lyrics where there's not an explicit meaning I, and i think part of it is also like when I think of like if I were to write a song for myself, mm-hmm. I would throw in Easter eggs that other people would not understand. Sure. So like part of me is thinking like, what if these are just things like from Billy's life that we're just yeah. like not privy to? But it's still like I mean they sound cool and make maybe we're not like the target audience, but that was still just like a cool thing to like put in the song. I totally. Thought that might, I thought that might have been a thing. Or maybe there's just a like a deeper meaning that we'll find out in like an interview somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I mean she. I mean she even has lyrics where she references a person by name um, in some of her albums, and which is I just feel like there, that there was at least one song in in this one that that did. Probably yeah, and I think that's cool when an artist kind of references see. someone in their in their life, and it's like you don't know who they are, you don't need to know, but the context of how they're referenced kind of fills fills in that you know yeah. that, that blank. But yeah, I think I think. And we've talked about this before in our other music episodes. I, I'm always fascinated by the balance of very universal lyrics and very particular lyrics. And I think that Billy does universal lyrics in a way in in, in a way that I prefer much more than other sort of uh, 
uh, rock or pop artists who have very just kind of generic, all-encompassing lyrics. I think that having having lyrics that aren't hyper specific but still sound really cool, and you can tell that she and and Phineas because. We haven't even mentioned Phineas. He literally co-writes right. all the songs with her yeah. and yeah. produces all the music, or not? Well, does a, a, a lo- has a large hand in the producing. Um, they're almost a like a, a just a band, a duo more than anything. Now, did he have a few lines in one of the songs? He didn't have a few. There, there was there was a male there was a male voice in one of the songs. I can't remember which one it was. He does he does um he does backup vocals and stuff. He typically doesn't have like his own, you know, like piece. <laughs> yeah, like he's not like a. I don't think he's. Has he ever been a? Has he ever been like on like the album? Like, no, he, that, no, he's never. He and he and Billy have never done a song where he has like his own verse. Yeah, like credit. Like I don't think he's gotten like a. Like I don't know if he's like if it's like Billy Eilish, comma. Yeah, Phineas. like featuring Phineas. Yeah, yeah. 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 They've, never, they've never done yeah, that. But like, I, the, I swear to God, there was a song in here that had like in like the in the later part of the song that had a male. You're, you're probably thinking of Blue, where she did the deepened vocals. Oh, in the is, li- yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. In li- cause, cause she's the only, she hasn't, there's no features on the album. It's okay. only her. So she, she, um, but in blue, there's, there's a, a verse or a few lines where it's like the vocals are altered to sound deeper. Gotcha. Um, and I assume it's, I assume it's her. Um, it sounds so no one else real. is credited. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I figured since he was like on it with her, like he, he was writing it, that he lent his voice to that. Yeah. No, I would, I would love that to happen, but I've, I've never, um. That, that that hasn't happened to my knowledge, but he does do the he does do the backup gotcha um, vocals and whatnot in production. This was so this was this show also was her it's her first tour without him. Um, oh they've, wow! They've always performed together. Like you see on like any talk show or at the award shows and stuff where they're performing, it's always both of them. Um, Phineas is either doing the guitar or piano or something, but yeah, this is her first solo show. So and because Phineas just dropped an album that he's touring, uh, and which is cool. Um, they should tour together. He should open for her. That would be crazy. <laughs> Get two shows in one. Um, yeah, Noah. What? What are? Uh, what <laughs> yeah, are I know. I've been, I've been a little <laughs> quiet over here. I'm sorry. No, you're good. You're fine. You're fine. I just what are your thoughts, Bonnie? Tell us. Tell us. So yeah. So um, of of this album, like by far the most popular one was "Birds of a Feather." That's the one yeah. I've been hearing on the radio like every so often. For sure. It hasn't been. I don't feel like that's. It's rare that it hasn't been overplayed for how popular it is. Yeah. You know, because yeah, yeah, yeah. um, I on YouTube music, my preferred music listening app. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, it shows like the, the amount of times that I guess it's been played, I guess on here. Mm-hmm. And that one has 433 million plays. Mm. The next closest one is 159 million plays. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's wild. <laughs> and that's uh Chihiro. Yeah. Um, yeah, Birds of Feather has gone crazy. I know. I, yeah. it, for good reason. Um, like, yeah, it, it's yeah. a good song. A I really, good really song. enjoy it. On yeah. Spotify, it's at 1.49 billion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Like, that That one is by far the populace's favorite. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The most radio savvy of, of all of them. Yeah, which is interesting because it seems like um, I've heard some some commentary that Lunch was sort of almost intended to be that like the breakthrough Wasn't that song one, like the first single it was a uh, yeah like she did the music video and everything for lunch yeah. before before the others um but birds of feathers yeah taken off now that um yeah my what? personal favorite is actually wildflower nice i Respect. i really i really enjoyed that one that one is also a moderately popular one that had on yeah. youtube music it's got like 143 million plays okay i don't know what it's got on spotify george you got that stat right there for wildflower yeah. let's run the numbers boys 529 million uh, <laughs> like damn <laughs> <laughs> Um. And but I think to me the most underrated one was the greatest. Mm, yeah. Um, which is kind of <laughs> bizarre. Ironic or, given the ironic name. Ironic given <laughs> the name. <laughs> yeah. But I just, I I don't know. I feel like for what the song is and like the lyrics that there was in it, you mm-hmm. know, I, I'm saying this very poorly. I know, but I just feel like it should be more popular than it is. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. I feel like it's a, it's a relatable song that yeah. every like everyone goes through a feeling like that at some point, whether it be in a relationship or just something in general. Sure, you know. Sure. So I felt like it would relate to a lot more people than I guess it does. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, I mean, yeah, like I, I didn't, I didn't hate any of the songs. They were all, they were all great. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's just those three were the three that really stood out to me. Totally. Um. And then 
I also took I, I don't know why I do this every time, but every time we do a music one, I take note of like the duration of the songs. Like there's uh, there's no song shorter than three minutes, and I think lunch is the shortest at three minutes. Yeah. And then I think the longest one is blue at five minutes and forty four seconds. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Like, that's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, it's yeah. A long one. Yeah. No, that's cool though. I like I like how. Yeah, that's kind of what I was saying earlier about each song feeling like its own kind of independent right. experiment almost of what can we do different and cool on this track. Like, yeah, each song really has enough time to establish its own Right, and that, that's, what I was, that's what I was going to get at with that specific note was like each song feels like it could stand alone. Sure. Like without the rest of the album and still be fantastic. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Kn- I know certain artists who just put like 29 second like transition songs <laughs> yeah. in between albums. <laughs> and yeah. it makes me so frustrated yeah, yeah, that yeah. they exist, if I'm being honest. Like I, I don't understand. I, I understand that it might be like a stylistic thing, but that has never been something where I've been like, oh, I'm glad that there was that. 30 second interlude between songs like I, I like you can put it in the like the front of another song or like the yeah. back of a song but i thought that i don't know i thought it was like very i thought it's it's, it's a little weird to just have stuff like that a good example of this is eminem's most oh, recent album. God. <laughs> eminem is the most guilty of the skits dude he he will just have this like random 45 second like internal monologue yeah. with himself <laughs> and then just continue with yeah. like with, with with the album. It I got really... I got a, I got a PSA for artists. If you're gonna do the skits and the interludes, make them separate tracks. Don't put a one minute phone call with your mom on the end of a song <laughs> so that I have to skip <laughs> the end of the song every time. You know what I'm saying? Let me yeah. let me take out the songs I like. But honestly, I'm I don't love <laughs> skits and inter like interludes generally in in albums. Uh, I feel like a lot of people like them, but I'm not big on them. Um, who was that? What? Who, who likes them? Clearly the artists that keep doing them. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly enough people for them to become a thing. Yeah. I, I can like I can I can handle um like X Ambassadors I think does a really good job of they'll do little like ten second snippets yeah. of a voice memo or of uh, you know, some some clip of so, somebody talking that, that sounds cool and it's well integrated into the song. Quinn used to do it well. Quinn, do, yeah, Quinn for sure did it well, um, but yeah, I, going back to this album, I think it's 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 great in that there's there's no fluff, there's no filler, there's no let's just throw in a one minute one minute voice memo just to have an interlude or let's do a let's just add an extra song because we want this to have a longer track list. Like there's none of that. Yeah, and one to to tie it into this, not exactly into that, but um, one thing it was, I kind of felt like it was a little inconsistent. Were some songs. Like, if you listen to the album in order, some songs led into each other nicely, yeah. but then others didn't. Mm. You know, like, like between, like, at the end of Skinny and the, like, beginning of Lunch, yeah, you know, yeah. like, that fades into each other really nicely, and then into Chihiro, it, like, doesn't. Right, right. You know, so, like... I, I didn't really know what to make of that. Like, I was like, oh, that's that's really nice. Like, if that happens with everyone, like, if they just sort of lead into each other nicely, that'd be really fucking cool. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, that'd be, like, that'd be different. Yeah. Kill- um, yeah. Killing, you have any critiques? <laughs> we haven't talked about critiques before, except before Noah Rodney. Yeah, all these oh, songs sure. fucking suck, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm, I, I understand what you're saying. Like, it wasn't, it didn't do a... It didn't do kind of a perfect bridge between each song, but it did have moments where it did that, and moments right. where like particular kind of notes or or elements of one song were kind of sprinkled into other songs, which I thought was cool. It did add a certain level of of um, right. interconnectedness. And I mean, it, I guess yeah. this is as George was saying, like getting into a little bit of the critique, like starting the album off like that, like it kind of set like a precedent for me. Yeah, and then I was yeah, like, yeah. all right. What? What? <laughs> it, went, yeah. it didn't do it this time. And then it did it for like another, I can't remember which two it did it for, but then another one led into another one nicely. I'm like, what are we doing here? <laughs> like, what is, what's going on? <laughs> one, one slight critique that I have is that like there are certain songs that have been so heavily post-processed and so heavily like they like added so many like vocal mm. filters and things that they sounded just a little bit like underwater. 
And I thought that that I, was. I sorry. I, I actually wrote that down. Yeah, I as, also I know exactly what you're talking about too, though. But I, but but I mean, but the you know I, I thought of it as a as a cool thing that you know the cover art is her sinking underwater, and I thought yeah. that some of it did sound it did oh, kind of have hey, that yeah that's <laughs> true isn't it <laughs> that, like submerging kind of feeling a uh, claustrophobic kind of feeling um doors don't open that way <laughs> what are we doing here <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> uh, but yeah but go on i didn't mean to uh, interrupt i just I, I had a similar note no i i i definitely thought it was stylistic i just said i'm just saying that at a certain point like it definitely kind of like as I was listening to it, and I was like this album, I didn't like sit down and like put this like with like an empty desk and put the and put the playlist on and then just like stare at the screen and like take notes as much. Like this one, I was like doing other things. I was listening to the album. I actually listened to it a couple of times, like after like the first time that we listened to it, and then, like mm-hmm. a couple of times after that. And it did. It was like it notably impacted my replay potential, like the replay potential of some mm. of the songs where I was like, OK, well, this one just sounds a little bit more muffled or like this one sounds yeah. a little bit more. And and I thought that, again, it was it was cool that it was stylistic, but it definitely it like stood out to me in terms of like a I, I, I would have I would love to put that album on. But like there are certain songs that I would just be like, hmm, maybe maybe I would skip this one if I was like feeling feeling a little bit more. Like the real biggest like shift was this was when I was playing like I played like La Amour uh, de, de Ma Vie and yeah, then like yeah. I I clicked on like another song and I was like dang this one just like like the difference between those two or just like one of them just like one of them just sounds so much more like cloudier and mm. I thought that like the contrast between like the most clear and the most cloudy was definitely a little bit like abrupt at least for me I got you I got you that's valid yeah I didn't I didn't particularly make that distinction between the the clear vocals and the more muffled or distorted vocals cuz i think there's a lot of different kinds of distortion that happen with the vocals there's you know you got the deeper vocals you got the the uh the techno vocals in in at the end of lamour um you've got yeah there's kind of like at certain i can't remember if it happens on this album on the previous album on uh the song nda there's kind of this like like the audio it's almost like the audio peaks in a deliberate way. Like the audio kind of gets distorted at a certain level, um, which is a technique I've actually heard in, in like some hip hop songs, which is interesting. Um, yeah, there is, there's a lot of different vocal techniques, which, which is, you know, and I think you run that risk with when you get experimental with stuff that, that, uh, you know, if, 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 if you like certain songs on an album, that's very experimental, you're probably not going to like every song of, uh, it, to the same degree because it's yep. just doing very different things. Going to scratch different itches, if you will. Um, yeah. Do you have any critiques of your own? Oh, hold on. Let me ask that again closer to the mic. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any critiques of your own, like of the album overall? Um... No, he thinks it's perfect. It's a ten I, out of ten. <laughs> I entertainment podcast, folks. I let me think. Let me think. It is. I don't know. That is hard. I do. I do very much like this album. I mean, oh, yeah. it's a. It's, uh, it's. It's. I'm trying to think of something that I that I am critical of. I couldn't tell based on your shirt. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> listener. I'm wearing some merch from the concert. Um, do you want to think about that while I ask George another? Quick yeah, question. let you, me think on it. I'm not. You paid ninety five dollars for that T shirt. <laughs> Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> it was forty five. Not not. Yeah, it was more like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 One thousand three hundred dollars <laughs> for that T shirt. No, that's if you want a hoodie. That's true. With yeah, all the, the tour locations. On yeah, the, the, the hoodies were were obscene. Um, no, and I I, I recognize <laughs> I'm probably coming off as biased by not <laughs> being able to think of a single criticism. I am I am a very big. A uh, fan of Billy, she was in my top five on Spotify last year, and I really, really like this album. Um, but I do not want to be above critiquing the things that I love. I think I should hold my artists and 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 uh, the art that I enjoy to a high standard. So let me think on that for a moment, okay. and you you get on to George. Uh, Mr. Uh, so Mitchell this there. is this. I guess this really could have gone in the light question round, but um, like when you're listening to like music for I guess like the first time. Or whatever. Like when you listen to this for the first time, what part of the song do you pay attention to like the most? Is it like the melody? 
is it like the lyrics themselves is it just the overall sound of it or like what what do you what do you find yourself focusing on more when you're listening to it i think the job of like the melody is to kind of get me into the energy of the song and i think that I usually listen at the lyrics when I'm like first listening to something because gotcha. I'm like, what are you trying to say? But I, and I think that like the melody's job is to try to get me into the in, in, in into the right headspace to even listen to that, even yeah. listen to those lyrics. I think that as like time goes on, I'm less listening to the lyrics and I'm more listening <laughs> yeah. to the melody. Mm. And like a, I don't know, maybe in like a little bit of a weird way. But once I like understand what the song's about, I can kind of just like appreciate the energy of it. Um, I'm also somebody who likes to listen to like, who like group songs by like emotion and stuff like that. Like I have like oh, a, yeah. I have yeah. like a, I have, a, I have like a smooth playlist. I have like a sad playlist. <laughs> I have like a, I have an energetic playlist. Dude, that like, sad playlist hits different <laughs> on rainy days. <laughs> it's, it's a good time. It's a good time. Um, but yeah, that's, that, that's probably my philosophy of it. Cool. Keelan, have you found any flaws? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and now he's no. on his phone, and this is unprofessional. No, zero flaws. No, I one, one thing that one thing that uh, I, I touched on actually in the in our stick season episode is that for me personally, I when it comes to emotional music or sad music, it can't be like too overtly depressing. I I, I want it to be a nuanced kind of sad. Um, and and he wants to feel that secondhand sadness. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, no, no, no. I don't want. I don't want a separation. I don't want a degree of separation from the emotion. I just want. I I think there's ways of you want con- to feel it, but you don't want it to affect you. Is that what you're no, getting at? No, no, not okay. quite. Never not mind. quite. All sorry, right. sorry. I'm I'm poorly articulating this. I welcome to my world, sir. I think that songs songs that are. <laughs> Songs that are like ov- like overtly depressing, um, that are just <laughs> listen to Noah is not making this easy on me. <laughs> He's giving me some crazy eyes. Um, oh my god, another book. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. Okay, I think that songs that are songs. <laughs> Every time I look up, it's a different face, guys. Okay, I'm just gonna look at my computer, um, but I know they're still doing it. <laughs> Songs that veer into being overtly depressing to the point where there is no other sort of, like I, I want kind of an emotional cocktail, if you will. I want there to be like the 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 heavy emotion, but also perhaps a twinge of hope, or perhaps uh, a twinge of, of of another sort of um, difficult emotion that that. That, I don't know. I want. I want. To, I want to balance. I want a multitude of emotions. I don't. I don't just want sad. Typically, I want to feel the complexities of of the human experience. And and not, and sometimes I understand that is just purely sad and depressed. But I think that's when a song is like that. It's very hard for me to revisit it, um, or or to play it more routinely. Uh, so I do think there are perhaps parts of this album that dip into that very depressed, very um, overtly sad sound to the point where. Like like Skinny, for instance, I think is a, a beautiful song, but the, there are there are points where it's it's hard to it's hard for me to revisit it just because it is it gets into a very sad space. It gets into a very low space, and perhaps if those lyrics were mixed with a bit of other sorts of emotions, um, or or a, a bit less like there's a song, or, uh, sorry, a lyric in that song do you like do you still cry or i think at one point she says like and i still cry and that's very dragged out and you know to to really put that visual of of crying and prolonged crying at the forefront of the song that really paints a a bleak picture Ah. um and i I, yeah and i and i would say that um i think I, i and i don't know i don't know if i would change the song i just think that uh perhaps for me like songs like that are are harder to routinely revisit or play when you're not in that headspace, if you will. Um, so that would that would be my critique. But I I, I mean I, I mean those those emotions that are expressed in that song are are very earned and are very real. And um, so I wouldn't necessarily change the song, but I think that more so a matter of personal preference, I suppose. So. So yeah. then my my question to you is because like there I. I really felt like more towards the end of the album, like the final like two, three songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really fell into that like 
yeah. like depressive state. Sure. You know? Like Blue talking about the sleep deprivation and the, all that right. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, like, do you feel like, because you only brought up, what was it, Skinny? Skinny, yeah. Like, is that how you felt like with those? Too, uh, or did you did you get that emotional cocktail that you yeah. so desired? I think I think blue was an emotional cocktail um, because it start blue started tonally different than it ended. Yeah, oh, um, remarkably so. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that, that was that was that was wild. Bittersweets was um, if you're talking about bittersweet, being one of those last three, uh, or was that one of the last three? Yeah, it's number nine. Is it okay? Yeah, it it was. Um, I got I don't remember that one. If I'm being completely honest. Yeah, that was an interesting one. That one was very – that one, to, to George's point, had a lot of the heavily filtered vocals. Oh, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and, and, and I didn't I didn't mind it, but it was – I think that it being – the emotions were a bit more uh, – conveyed, conveyed in a less direct way, um, even if they were perhaps still as, as heavy. Uh, but that that song was a bit more testing the the vibes and and doing crazy stuff with the with the production than with than like the than the lyrics and Skinny had heavy emphasis on the lyrics more than the production I'd say, um, so yeah yeah I, I think that like a central kind of theme that we've been we've been kind of talking about would be like the balance between creating like an emotional state of mind within an album or like communicating that versus like necessarily pulling all of your listeners into that state of mind or like requiring that they enter that state of mind to listen to the music. Mm. And one thing and one like great time where I like experienced this was also like at a Dermont Kennedy concert um, where shout out to Dermont Kennedy. Yeah, we, um, <laughs> we sat, uh, we, we were, we, we were, we were in the, co- we were in the concert and, and he, and I remember him like specifically going like, all right, we're going to take it down a notch. And then everybody in the audience just went, "Yay!" They're like, "Woo!" <laughs> <laughs> and 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 and, and he, just, he just he chuckled for a second because, like, his his I'd say that his music is also similar to Billie Eilish's, where it's like a little bit more like subdued or like like trying to convey that kind of emotional state of mind. I think his like last album was literally called Sonder, yeah, and yeah. um, like I I, I would say that. That was like that was that was a moment that I will always remember because it's like the artist is like trying to communicate like a state of mind or like a, or like a period of their lives with this kind of with this kind of album, but the people who are listening to it, like especially in like certain in like certain situations, are listening to it to have fun or like they're mm-hmm. listening to it for like to enhance like a to enhance like an evening to enhance a mood to like just listen to music, and sometimes it's difficult to do that when the sound design is very like impactful or, or when yeah. like the emotions that are like being conveyed are very almost strong in an unapproachable way. And I yeah. think that in that kind of case, when we're, when we're leaning more towards that kind of element, I think at that point people start to feel a little bit more, um, a li- maybe just like a tad more detached mm. or like a tad more like okay i'll listen to this and then i'll like i'll feel it like the first time but like yeah. the next couple of times i'm gonna have to like back off on that um or else it'll get like because i don't want to get like absorbed by the music that i listen to every single time that i listen to it sure yeah that makes sense yeah like i feel like i feel like the point you're making of, of it being unapproachable like i think i think i would say yeah certain songs demand a level of engagement and investments and 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 some songs don't and and i think that yeah you just have to decide as an artist what what you're asking of your listener yeah and, and you don't always need to, like there are i do not like songs that are completely on the other end where oh, it's sure, just like sure, we're sure. just talking to talk and yeah <laughs> i mean like it's it's cool and <laughs> it gets like nine billion less like nine billion views or whatever but like what like everyone walks out and they're like yeah and then they forget about it like the exact next day and it's mm-hmm. just like ah <laughs> yeah so I, I would say that it's not necessarily like that's not like a bad side of the scale to be on but it's mm-hmm. definitely something that I think we need to be like thinking about yeah totally and 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 I think I think um I know we keep going back to the to the title but I think I think the hard and soft themes like there's almost sort of a deliberate whiplash that happens throughout the album where 
I mean, and I think I think at the very at the very start of the album, it's kind of telling you what you're about to experience. Because first, you get Skinny, which is that very uh, very soft, very sad, you know, melody that talks about heavy themes like you know body image and and fame and and uh, all this stuff. And then oh, I have a I have a footnote on that. I want to come back to. Uh, and then and then. Um, the se- the yeah, second circle back, <laughs> and then the second song, literally right after that really heavy track, is lunch, which is which like is the most crazy to come after a song called Skinny. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> which is this very like upbeat, like gay pop song, and it's just such a such a you know one eighty. And then the rest of the album kind of does a similar thing. Um, okay, I want to touch on this is so random. In in uh, in Skinny, she has she has that lyric. Um, when I step off the stage, I'm a bird in a cage. I'm a dog in a dog pound. And one of the like funniest things I've like ever seen on the internet was like on the on the comments for that song, somebody clearly misheard it. And they just they just commented, What the fuck is a dog pond? <laughs> <laughs> and I like I can't listen to the song without thinking about a dog pond. <laughs> uh, that's so good. And like this this internet user just being like What the fuck is a what? dog pond? <laughs> What's a dog? Where do I get where do I go to see the a, dog pond? A, a fun episode idea might just be like looking at internet co- like looking at comments. Yeah, just like yeah, stuff yeah, that yeah. we all like st- st- like something that we all agree on just being like what's going on here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that would be really funny. <laughs> well, yeah, so Jens, do you do you have any any more just general remarks you want to make on the album before we uh, hop into our deep question round. Um, I, I appreciate her transparency with her sexuality that she makes very clear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know how much of a trend that is with her other albums, but like in this one, there's like, what, four out of the six songs reference it, I think. Oh, really? Uh, or, uh, at Noah some... was counting. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's just, it, it's something that like I knew about her. I didn't know how much she puts it yeah, it, I don't know how much she puts it into music. I'm not necessarily an avid listener of Billie Eilish. Yeah, um, but it, I mean, I just appreciate the transparency because I know that for a lot of people, it's taboo. You for know? sure, yeah. No, it's 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 cool, but it's it is an interesting thing because I was sort of following the you know the press around this album, and so she was asked on a red carpet out of the blue what her sexuality was. Wow! Before this album came out. And, and so, and, and that's kind of how it came out, how, like it, how, pe- how people found out, you know, and she was not happy about that. She oh, was like, y'all should have, I wouldn't be either. Are you kidding me? Me anything else. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and so I'm not sure if songs like lunch were sort of a, a response to that, like sort of taking ownership of, well, now that my sexuality is kind of public, like I might as well own it, you know, and, right. and, and make it, you know, part of my art. Or if she had already produced that and was like, kind of just a coincidence of the timing. I'm not sure. I, I- how soon before the album came out was it? Uh, a few months. Oh, so I would man. imagine she probably yeah she probably already had that song. had the song yeah yeah she had a very strong sexually liberated uh, phase surrounding this album which I I'm all for it yeah yeah yeah. Anyways, that awesome, segues awesome. directly into my first deep question. So That's Noah, <laughs> crazy. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh. Billy has had a very unique rise to fame where she, you know, she kind of came onto the scene as like a 14, 15 year old and became famous, you know, as an adolescent and has just amassed this enormous following. And, and it's been it's been very interesting to see the sort of like the obsession and the idolization that has surrounded her because it's there's there's very few artists like that reached that level at, at this age. I think Justin Bieber is one of the very few others we've seen in our in our lifetime where they've been that immensely successful so young and um and she's she's very much embraced it and and has has talked about like her fans sort of being like family and an extension of herself um whereas other artists most recently uh chapel rowan like sparked a little controversy saying that she's like if you are a fan of mine or enjoy my art that does not give you the right to come up to me and like hug me in the street you know And, and she sort of set some very clear boundaries and people were very off put by that and they're like like what? But they're your fans. Like they should. And I, I think I think we as a well, culture. That's why you ask first. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I think as a culture, we probably need to set some boundaries when it comes to artists and celebrities. So my question is, uh, 
in this very long tangent I just went on, to what degree do you think like obsessing over celebrity uh, is sort of acceptable, fun, healthy? And at what point do you think it reaches sort of a, a toxic level? So, okay. Now I'm dating a Swifty. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There, there, there comes a point where there is a difference between fangirling or fanboying mm -hmm. over somebody and having a cult-like following. Mm. All right. Um, I think when I think it becomes inappropriate in two different parts. Okay. One where you see them and you are actively violating their right to like you know, personal space. Sure. You know, like, as you said with uh, Chapel Rowan, when people would just come up and hug her, like, don't do that. Right. You, you ask first. Like, that's not okay for anybody to do to anybody. Mm -hmm. Like, even if they say, it's okay, come hug me, you got to ask first because totally. they might, they don't know what's going to happen. You might get stabbed. Exactly. You know, like. <laughs> might be the person from the diner. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, it, once it starts going beyond just, enjoying their product and like liking who they are as a person and you are actively seeking them out to interact with them that it kind of gets a little creepy then yeah um but the other part that i was referencing was when it becomes your whole life yeah you know like you you don't have that drive to like actually like interact with them but it's every part of your person i sense <laughs> A bit of shade being thrown here. There's some, there, there, there may be some projection here. Listen. <laughs> I realize I'm saying this to while well, you're in the room, Keelan. I'm not projecting this towards you. With oh the no, Green Lantern. I, I know, but, I know what you're so <laughs> implying. Like, so, like, w when it becomes your entire life, that's when I think you've gone too far. Yeah, when it becomes yeah, all consuming and yeah, yes. yeah. I got you, I got uh, you. And, like you, you can't escape it. <laughs> yeah, and we, I think we definitely need to talk more about like parasocial relationships as a culture. Yeah, like as like totally. the influencer kind of like as I don't know as we've become like more connected online, it's so easy for like one person to be like immediately connected to like a hundred thousand people, and like whenever it's like a strong personality like Billie Eilish who like dresses a certain way and has like a clear vibe, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people can like relate to that, and I think that it can get very. Um, it can get very immersive sometimes in a way that yeah. I don't know is too, um, I don't know if it's too like emotionally healthy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, I don't know. It's such an interesting thing. Cause, cause there's, there's, you know, people get, like people having really strong interests. I think all of us have very strong interests oh, yeah. and passion, you know, I mean, from the Cardinals to Green Lancer and, you know, and then, and then there's, it's it's interesting. Yeah, what's yours, George? <laughs> <laughs> Star Star Trek. Well, you're you're less. You're, you have less. Star Trek. <laughs> you have le I feel like you have less uh, hyper interests in specific franchises and things in in the way that that I do or that Noah does with Avatar and and whatnot. Like you you have your passions, Godzilla. Uh, you know, <laughs> but it's like it's like not as bold. I don't. I didn't mean to exclude you from that, George. I'm sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Now George, he's crying. George also has passions of like you know helping people medically and stuff, but like God. no, that's that's stupid. What a prick, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> uh, but it's I, I just think it's an interesting distinction where it gets to be like where the thing you're obsessed with is not not a franchise or a piece of art, but a, the person. It's a person, a living yes. person, and and it's hard when the person themselves is so much of the brand. Like for me, Zack Snyder. Yeah, it's called the Snyder Cut. It's called Zack Snyder's Justice League. He's he is at the forefront of so much of what he makes. So it's like me being obsessed with his movies. I'm sort of inadvertently obsessed with him and his brand. And so it's, you know, but but I but you you never want it to get to a point where it's like your life is just just another human, you know? Like, right. But you can I feel like you can have that obs that passionate obsession with their work. But it's, I don't know. It's just an interesting an interesting discussion. Uh, yeah. So thank you for your thank you for your two cents. I, I agree yeah. with I agree with your breakdown very much. So, yeah. I wish I had said some things differently, but I think my point <laughs> got across. <laughs> <laughs> Last chance if you want to say a different remark, I can edit it in. I mean, I think just you know what what I said towards the end, like where it becomes your entire life. Yeah. You know, and I, I, <laughs> when, when you got nothing else going on. <laughs> no, like if that envelops your your whole 
person and like that is your whole personality then that's something you need to reflect on and be like is this really okay sure 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 um that i have a question for george <gasps> are you going to acknowledge me motherfucker <laughs> yes noah we are Over here I... t- texting away <laughs> texting on the job you're going to this guy all right. Um, okay. <laughs> Back to business. <laughs> so, um, in in uh, reference to the greatest, uh, the song "The Greatest," um, there there is a, a strong emphasis on. How, how do I say this? I don't want to say like hiding your emotion, but like staying stoic while you got all this turmoil going on inside. People pleasing to a degree. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So like. Have you ever been in a position or like when was the last time you've been in a position where you couldn't show your emotion because it would re it would make the situation worse? You know what I'm saying? Like where you, you had all this conflict of emotion inside, but you couldn't show it because it would make the situation worse. Good question. Or have you ever felt that way? I would say that I have felt that way before. Um, it's it's interesting because I'm I'm someone who pauses and like thinks a great deal before I say stuff. Um, it's very like except for some like silly joking off the cuff remarks. I typically like to be very intentional with like how I communicate. So there's definitely, like, a heavy amount of filtering that I do um, whenever I, like, try to present the way that I'm, like, feeling to other people. Um, So I'd say that, to be honest, I'd kind of do that a great deal, but I think to a beneficial way. We just never see the true George. We never (laughs) know what's going on in there. Because I, I, I definitely think that, like, that has generally played like like there are there are very there are very many situations where i can like i can pause for a second and be like okay i'm responding out of like anger here or maybe i'm not like maybe i'm not like that wouldn't necessarily like change the way that i like change what i'm trying to say but it definitely like changed the way that i'm trying to communicate it or like acknowledging the fact that i'm like feeling something before i say it is a way to like at least over um at least acknowledge bias that i have before i communicate in a way that i think is healthy so i would say that i don't typically like just keep everything inside in like an unhealthy way but i think that i do that maybe like 10 percent, like every time that i communicate which is like a roundabout way of saying yeah, all the time, but, <laughs> but there, there hasn't not necessarily been, in a bad way. There hasn't been one specific like big moment in your life where you're just like, I can't like, I feel this way, but I can't say it because it'll make everything so much worse. I mean, other than like relationship stuff, probably not. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You should give explicit details. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 think I, te- should, I, I think we should deep dive into this. In our maybe, remaining five minutes. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe next episode, listener. <laughs> um, hey, Keelan. Yes, sir. If you could ask Billy one question about her creative process, what would it be? <sighs> Can we collab? Okay. That's crazy. <laughs> that you're, you're not a music you're guy not, at all. You're That's not, you're, crazy. You're not. You're she not, acts too. You know. You're not. You're not allowed to say that. <laughs> uh, yeah. My my question would be where in your next project do I fit in? Um, <laughs> We're not. Again, I won't accept. What that vision anyway. do you see for the music video that I'm directing? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, one question about her creative process. Um, oh, jeez. Oh, jeez, Rick. <laughs> oh, jeez, Rick. We got uh, 15 minutes. Hurry. Uh, okay, okay. Um. Oh, God. Okay, okay. One question about her creative process. It's difficult because 
she's extremely open about her creative process. So it leaves me, I don't have, I don't wonder as much because she's like done such a immense like myriad of interviews and things. And um, not that I've watched that many or anything, but I, uh, you know, I, <laughs> but I, I have, I have, you know, listened to her and Phineas talk about their process quite a bit. I'm not sure what, what I, what I wonder. Um, I mean, to be honest, I would, you know, just, just from a, a fan's perspective, I would be curious about projects that never saw the light of day or things that are yet to be released or things that she just, like, what are some ideas that you, that you, that never uh, fully came to fruition? And why is that? You know, what, what blocked that from happening? Um, I'm always very curious about unreleased things and, and things that for some reason or another couldn't be released. Like, I, I just find that really interesting. And so I, I'd wonder, were there any topics or themes that you did that you wanted to express that maybe you didn't think would fit with the rest of a project or didn't think would be the right time culturally to release? Uh, and, and why is that? Um, and and what are some ideas you have for for future projects that 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 may or may not happen? Like what I, I just I, I as an as an artist and a writer, like I I'm always in a state of ideating, and I just have a fuck ton of ideas for films and stories and stuff in my notes and I, half of them probably will never actually come to exist and so I'm just curious what what's in her notes what's in her like what's on the back burner for her that, that uh, may or may not come that's what I'd be curious about um coolio yeah yeah sick nasty sick nasty <laughs> uh I have, I have one more super quick question I might throw out if that's if that's all right uh so I, I wanted to know this 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 album is sort of uh, thematically linked by the color blue, and I mean it has it has the song blue. What? <laughs> the uh, the album cover is blue. What? Um, in in much in many of the photo shoots and and things like she's dressed in all blue. Oh. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's a very blue centric album, and I think it sounds rather blue. You know, I think emotionally too. Uh, and she's kind of done with her different albums, sort of different color schemes. But we won't get into all that. But if you could release an album that, that uh, you know, was, was personal to you in some way, what color would you choose to thematically link the album together? Um, and, and I know I've, I want to pose this to both of you because it's just a, just, just a color uh, will, will suffice. And um, I'm right. curious. One answer, simple, deep red. Let's fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is, this might be, my answer might be marred by a little bit of, recency bias because Keelan sure. you and I talked about this before we started recording I have been really getting into more earthy colors yeah lately you know I've got I've got my little hunting camo hat because mm-hmm. I go hunting all the time <laughs> and I like I've, I've started incorporating more like darker like browns or, or like even green a little bit into mm-hmm. into my wardrobe so I'd, I'd probably go with one of those green sounds like a better answer than brown mm. so i'm gonna go with green <laughs> i feel like you're <laughs> yeah. describing stick season <laughs> by noah khan well, maybe but, <laughs> with these earthy colors no, no, that, yeah yeah that somehow didn't come to mind when i was explaining that but yeah no green is green would be cool yeah like a like a deep forest green Ooh, i like that yeah, yeah. that's nice deep green and deep red sick no, well, I can't both be deep. Uh, <laughs> Noah's now neon grass. green. <laughs> I'm going to go grass green. <laughs> awesome, awesome. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, all right, boys. This has been a delightful discussion. Of oh, sure. Hit me hard and soft. Oh, no. You can, oh, yeah. Episode, you, that's fine. You, you, t- <laughs> <laughs> no, you took it in. You can take it out. Sorry. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. No, I'll rescind. I'll rescind. Go, go for it now. All right. Thank you, everybody, for, uh, for listening to us goof off again and uh, review uh, our thoughts on Billie Eilish's "Hit Me Hard and Soft." Uh, I had a, I feel like we had a really good discussion today, boys. How about you? You guys think we did good? Sick, love that. I'm not giving you guys enough time to do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I can monologue all day if you want me to. Um, yeah, great discussion. Uh, highly recommend listening to it if you haven't. I know you've probably heard "Birds of a Feather" uh, <laughs> on the radio if you listen to the radio anymore. Um, but, uh, yeah, we will see you next time and talk about whatever we decide in the coming week and a half. (laughs) (laughs) Indeed. Indeed. All righty.
Thanks, listener. Yeah, thank you, listener. Take care. Be sure to uh, give us a follow on Spotify, a subscribe on YouTube, and listen to the rest of our episodes, and uh, and stay tuned for more. Yeah. And you can find us wherever you get your podcasts, if it's on Spotify <laughs> or YouTube. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> If All you're right. an overall enjoyer of fun, come back for more in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Peace out, listener. Bye, Bye guys. Bye-bye. Jiggling. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>